Soccer 605, we're here with Coach Steve Binkley of the Brookings Bobcats Boys Varsity. First uh, first year with the team, Coach, and you guys are having some great success. Tell me a little bit about what the season's gone like for you. Well, I'm lucky to inherit a team, Aaron Kaczmarek, uh, from SDSU, has coached these guys for a long time. And so a lot of credit to her for sort of whipping them in shape. I know a lot of our success isn't because of the three weeks I had with them yeah. before the season started. These guys know how to play soccer, like intelligent guys. They've worked together for a long time. We happen to have a a big group of seniors this year so I was lucky enough for my first year to be like man you know uh, just have it in spades this year and uh, so it's been great so far. It's always nice to benefit from the fruits of somebody else's labor though right? Yeah that's true <laughs> that's very true. So now you you teach at the school right can you tell me a little bit about your soccer background? Right uh, I'm actually from Brookings High School okay. and so I was at the University of Minnesota I didn't okay. play soccer in college. Um, but, but did you play for Brookings High but School? I played for, for the high school One yeah. club? That's right yeah back in the day I remember our shirts uh, for the state tournament were all white and baby blue and had Bob Marley kicking a soccer ball on them. Oh, I remember those. You see, that was before they made the rule that you had to have school colors, and so yeah. we got in there at a good time, I think. That's right. Yeah. So, now, there are a few differences that have come with, with sanctioned versus non-sanctioned, and you've experienced one from a player's side and now one from a coach's side. Give us a little of a comparison from your perspective. Yeah, I think the, you know, the team atmosphere of it, coming down on a bus instead of carpooling, you know, the parent-driven thing versus the school-driven thing, uh, adds a lot of seriousness to it and competition to see the stuff that SDHSAA does for the sport and um, the idea of an organization that uh, everyone buys into and plays by the same rules and all that consistency, I think, really helps our all the players really um, feel that it is, a, it is an important game and it is, does belong in our state. And it's nice for them to be able to get, uh, not have issues with getting out of school for games, yeah. be able to put trophies in the, sh in the school sh trophy case, right? Yeah, that helps you. Yeah, it makes you want to earn them even more. That's right. So tell me about, a little bit about your team's success so far this season. You guys have been doing pretty darn good. Yeah, we've had um, a couple games last week that were test games. I think we had games early on that we knew um, we'd be really competitive in, but this year seems like the year where there are eight teams that are all neck and neck and we watch the score lines for the other teams and know that every game for the rest of the season is going to be tough, tough as heck. Yeah. Um, so we had a game last week against Watertown, we thought we could uh, pull it out and it ended up being 2-2 yeah. and so that was a scrappy one. Last week we got ahead of uh, Lincoln 2-0 and they scrapped back and got one 3-2. Yeah. So our guys know like every you know 80 minutes I think it went down to the, the th uh, three minutes left and they got, they got a goal on us. So I think we've been talking to them in practice about that too that they know there's not going to be an easy game but we're not an easy team to play either. Yeah, every uh, game is winnable. That's right and so it's I mean how, how much more can you ask for for a player or a coach to go into every game knowing it's going to be a big contest and I think everybody in the state kind of knows that this year that uh, there's nobody to overlook. Yeah, so, yeah. There's a lot of good competition a lot of parity. So Lincoln got their goal the, the winning goal with three minutes left in the game? Oh yeah it was hot as heck out. I, I, know, so, I know our guys had it, like credit to, to Watertown too for tuckering us out um, on that Tuesday game and I think Lincoln yeah. didn't have one. They were fresh over ready to go. They knew even when we got up 2-0 early, they knew that they could play their game and, and still come back and, and the credit to them. and yes. Doug for So now I understand a little bit better that, that tweet, Lincoln wasn't having it. Oh, apparently. <laughs> yeah, they, they did well. They we're not yeah. going to settle with that. So tonight you have Huron and by the time this airs, uh, the game will be done and over. Um, any special plans? They're, they're a quick team. Yeah, they're a quick team. We don't, I haven't seen any video of them, actually, so. Well, there'll be some after tonight. Well, that's true, that's true. <laughs> plenty, to, plenty to go over, but um, yeah, I think we have an idea of how we're, gonna, how we're gonna play and how they're gonna play and how we shaped up against them last year, so what, I mean, what else do you tell you guys besides try to play your game yeah. and, and, and get a result? Any result against here, and I think is a good one. We'd be happy to tie them. Yeah. We'd love to beat them at home, yeah. you know, so. It's always nice to win in front of your home crowd. That's right, yeah, so we'll do our best, yeah. Well, Coach Binkley, we're really looking forward to tonight's game. I want to wish you the best of luck. Thanks for taking time with us and good luck with the rest of the season. You bet. Thanks a lot.